Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the BFNL Netball Show for another week. First week of finals done and dusted. We're starting to well and truly picture ourselves towards the pointy end of the 2014 season. I'm Sean Kelly. Matt Wilshire is with me, as always, mate. Some fantastic games of netball that you saw on the weekend. Yeah, exciting times in the uh, netball ranks, mate, with a couple more exciting games this weekend, so... Good things to look forward to. There will be indeed during this show today a very exciting thing happening during this show, Maddie. We're li- deviating a little bit from the BFL course and we're debuting Sovereigns TV. We, you may have heard the announcement during the week, the Sovereigns appointing their head coach, Natasha Chocolate, and their high performance manager, Eloise Southby. We got a we have them on the BFNL Netball Show just for you this week, but I digress. We're going to talk about BFNL Netball first and the finals last week, starting with the qualifying final out at the Eastern Oval on Sunday. On Saturday, I'm sorry. Sunbury taking on Redan. It was Sunbury winning it 40-31 to 31 to move into this week's second semi-final and a chance to play off for a spot in the grand final this week. Sunbury started well, 11 goals to 3 in the first quarter and they maintained that buffer pretty much all the way throughout the game. Redan just ruining their slow start to the game. Sophie Gunn, 32 goals for Sunbury. Ruth Smith with 8 and then for Redan, Emma Henry, 22 and Ruby Parry, 9. Better players for Sunbury, Smith, Mackey and Moffat. And for Redan, it was Frew, Parry and piece. Matty, tell us a little bit about this game. From what I've heard, Sunbury started strong and then were able to maintain for the rest of the game. Yeah, they had a really, really good start, Sunbury. That first quarter really set them up. They um, got into that great lead and I was uh, everyone on the bench was sort of a bit worried there for, for Redan at the moment, but Redan did slowly call, claw their way back into the game. Mm-hmm. They sort of maintained that gap that was there. Um, look, they were so dominant in that first quarter that, yeah, obviously it just led on for the game. Sophie Gunn was really hard to stop, so they had the ball... Um, so Stanley was threading into it really well and really yep. quick through the midcourt. So it made it tough for the defenders, and that was really where they were sort of struggling a bit with Dan. But look, um, all credit to Redan. They um, played a, a fantastic game. That was just Sunbury's first quarter that really sort of caught them over the line. And I think that um, Sunbury have proven this week that they really are the team to beat. Yep. And they're going to be very hard to beat for the rest of the year. Some credit to Redan. Getting, it's their third time against Sunbury. They've been inside 10 goals every time. They'll have taken a few things out of that game. And a chance for, I know, a lot of some young players in the Redan side as well that had a final last year and were dumped straight out of it. Gives them another chance to play in a final as well and taste, I suppose, the, the cut and thrust of finals netball. Yeah, no, exactly. So they were looking forward, yeah, forward to bouncing back this week, hopefully, and then meeting Summer again, maybe in the grand final. You never know. That's what they're hoping. Redan, of course, live to fight another day through the purpose of finishing second and having the double chance. Before that game was the second elimination final at the Eastern Over between East Point and Lake Wendere. This was a bit of a thrilling conclusion in this game. Lake Wendere seemingly in control for most of the day. They led at half time. They led at three quarter time. And with about nine minutes to go in the game, correct me if I'm wrong, Matty, they were four or five goals up yep. and looking okay. Correct. Eleanor Van Dyke's hurt her calf, had to go off the court. All of a sudden, Emma Ryan's been moved back into defence after she was scuffling a little bit in the goals. Lauren Jews come on the bench and had a final quarter similar to what she did in last year's qualifying final where she just forgot how to miss shots. Brought East Point back into the game, overtook the Lakers and sent the Lakers on their mad Monday. 43-37 win for East Point. Drew 18 goals, Cindy Daniel 17 and Emma Ryan 8. For Lake Wendery, Kat Biskin with 25 and Candace Page with 12 goals. Better plays for East Point, Ryan, Daniel and Van Dyke. And for the Lakers, it was Biskin, Moyle, uh, Boyle sorry, and Romsey Walsh. Disappointing for the Lakers. They felt that they were in control of this one pretty much all day and just getting nutted at the final post. Yeah, look, the, the final score doesn't really show how close that game was all day. It was really close for that first and second and third quarter, and it was really could have gone either way, you didn't know. And uh, Paige and Biscan really getting on top of the uh, defence from East Ballarat. And um, look, they, they played a fantastic game that first half in the in their shooting positions, and um, I really thought they were going to stick on top of them and uh, come over the line. But East, that last seven minutes, just really turned it on. They played their best netball for the day and uh, outscored... 
Lake Wendere by nine goals, I think it was, in that last quarter, which yeah. is really where Lakers lost the game. Really strong finish to the game by East Point. They'll move on and play Redan in the first semi final that we'll touch on very shortly. The other winners from the weekend on Sunday, also at the East Nova, were Melton coming up against North Ballarat City and didn't exactly have things all their own way. Scores tied at both of the first two breaks, but then Melton pulling away in the second half to win 54 to 45. Mel McCauley, 35 goals for Melton. Brooke Leeson, 19. Gina McCartan, 26 for North Ballarat City and Hayley Fiddler, 19 goals. On a day, Matty, where it started with a bit of drama for Melton. Brooke Thompson out of the side as a last-minute withdrawal. Liz Birch out of the side as a last-minute withdrawal. All of a sudden, a lot of people thinking, hang on, North City going to come right back into this game. And for the first half, they did. They lifted. Yeah, exactly. Them late withdrawals really would have given North a lot of confidence, which is uh, what I think they really needed for that first half. And it shows with the ties, uh, the scores being tied at both quarter time and half time. So, but then you look at uh, the second half, and uh, Gleason really turned it on. She um, shot 13 goals in that second half, which is I think more than her average for the year for each game. So, she's played a really good game. An interesting stat for this one: there was 99 goals scored for the day. Yep, with only seven misses. So obviously a. Uh, very active game as Wardy's just shot us with the uh, starting gun. The cap gun. I just, I, I kind of didn't glance over because I knew what was happening. The same thing's happened before. So I was looking at you and I noticed he waited until I turned in the direction to get it as well. But we digress. A fantastic shooting percentage in this game by both sides and really good work done by Melton. They'll move on to the second semi-final this week to take on Sunbury, which we'll talk about shortly. But before we do that, Matty, it's time to have a look at Sovereigns TV. Yep. The very first edition will be up on the Sovereigns website very soon, but we're giving our fantastic BFNL netball show uh, viewers first glance at it. Alloy South being Natasha Chocolate coming up right now. Welcome here to Sovereigns TV, the very first edition of Sovereigns TV. And we're here on the night that we're announcing our coaching staff for the Sovereigns for season 2015. Firstly, our head coach, Natasha Chocolate. Natasha, thank you. Welcome to Sovereigns TV. And of course, welcome to Sovereigns as well. Thank you very much for having me. It's been an exciting couple of weeks and very exciting. And of course, our high performance manager joins us as well, Eloise South. Eloise, welcome to Sovereign TV. Yeah, thanks. And I'm glad this is the first edition. Yes. I'm glad that Tasha and I are part of it. So. And we're very glad that you're a part of it as well. Obviously, fantastic netball names coming into the Sovereigns, coming into the Sovereigns family to start our life off. Natasha, what is it that attracted you to the Sovereigns when made the approach? Obviously, came and had a chat to you about the Sovereigns. And what is it that you put the reason you put your hand up to say, yes, I want to be a part of this? Um, I was really excited. Eloise, you've been involved in coaching before in netball with the Vixens at, at the highest level, obviously, going around. Obviously, coming down to the VNL level, what is it that's attracted you to come down and get involved with the Sovereigns? Well, same with Tashi. I think um, the, certainly the plan and the whole community aspect of the Sovereigns. I think this is a great opportunity for everyone involved in the community, and there's lots of teams and leagues that play. Um, to come on in and, and learn from, you know, both Tashi and I play and represent our country and um, I'm sure we've both got lots of ideas and things we'd like to pass on. So and I think it's a great opportunity for me to work with a fellow ex-teammate. I play with, with Tashi in a number of premierships and yep. alongside her for the, for the Diamonds. So for me it's about, um, you know, assisting Tashi as well in that big coach role and trying to get the very best out of the, the coaching staff and also all of the players that come from the Ballarat area. Was that part of the, your decision making process as well, Natasha, knowing that the Eloise might come on board as well and that you've had such a long relationship and worked so well with her in yeah, the past? Yeah, most definitely. Um, I've always thought Eloise has been such a great reader of the game and always knew she would be a fantastic coach. So to um, actually get the opportunity to work with her, um, I know when playing like in our playing history, I've always found her when I was moving into a new position. She was just amazing, the knowledge that she passes on. So to have the opportunity to work with her, you know, um, and learn from her was a really exciting opportunity. So that did come into play. Well. Now, Coach, we're about a week or so away from trials. Our yes. first trial starting off Sunday, the 14th of September. Yes. Is there anything in particular you're looking for in your playing squad this year? Um, I think you know we're going to have a look down, uh, have a look at the list that are put forward and the, the girls that are actually trialling. But I think a good mixture of experienced players and youth, um, and just 
uh, building that cultural, um, the new culture that you know, we have to pass on from year to year. Yep, that's fantastic. Obviously, Eloise, how do you see your role working? Obviously, Natasha being the head coach and yourself as the high performance manager, what synergies between your role and Natasha's will there be to you soon? Well, Natasha's in charge, <laughs> so I'm taking the report to her. Yep. Um, but no, look, I think number one, a lot of a game night, so we'll be there with Tash um, and making sure yeah, kind of the bench is running smoothly and, and everything. Um, obviously, looking at the, the pre and post planning of the game, and obviously then assisting the coaching staff. So in a high performance manager role, I will um, have a look at the, the selections and be there. And um, but you know, my role is very much to have a look at the planning and succession that goes into the club and making sure that we are also developing coaches throughout the region and um, passing on our knowledge and, and making sure we're getting everyone up to the levels that are required to, to coach this level. You mentioned development throughout the region. Of course, Sovereigns isn't just a Ballarat-based team. It's representative of all of Western Victoria. So we've been casting there far and wide, looking at players, coaches, support staff, everything. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sorry, that was just a general oh, question I threw around. Oh, Sovereigns TV. Yeah. Thanks for joining us. Good luck for the trials coming up and very much looking forward to what's going to be a fantastic inaugural season for the Sovereigns in 2015. Natasha, thank you for joining us. Aloise, have fun in your new role. Thank you. That's Sovereigns TV for our very first edition. We'll be back very soon from the first trials on Sunday the 14th of September with more Sovereigns TV. Natasha Chocolate, the head coach of the Sovereigns, along with Eloise South, with the high performance manager, joining us to chat all about their new roles with the newest VNL team in the region. Maddie, time to get back onto the track, time to talk semi final BFNL netball, starting with the second semi final being played tomorrow down at the Eastern Oval, Sunbury taking on Melton. This is going to be a really interesting game. Yeah, it'll be a fantastic game, especially if they get uh, Brooke Thompson back into that side. She's mm. going to be a real key to that defence, and uh, I'm sure that she will be back. So this is the game where I really thought that um, so somebody don't get pushed the most. Melton are a really, really strong side. They've, uh, been, they've proven themselves plenty of times this year, and I think that if there is a team that's going to beat Sunbury, that Melton are the ones. They've got Well, some... they are. They're the only ones to have beaten Sunbury throughout the home and away season. Exactly. Well, yes, there you go. So, I think there's going to be a very, very good game, and uh, Kim Bailey and Sunbury probably will be a very bit, a lot worried about this game, and Mal and the girls have got sort of a nothing to lose attitude. They've got that second chance with Dave Gay from their win last week, so they'll be going in with a lot of confidence, and I think that Melton, I don't know why, are going to win in a very, very close game. I've got the same feeling too for some reason. Their teams match up really well on the court. Mm. Obviously, there's no direct match up for Mel McCauley. Beck Moffat's probably, she's obviously got the got the stature about it, but she probably doesn't quite have the height yep. or the mobility for Mel. The thing that's really dangerous about Melton is that if they do try to double team, bringing Brooke Leeson into the game the way they did last week, we've spoken about it a couple of times, it's Melton's that's their whole. That's their Hail Mary pass. Bring Brooke Gleeson into the game. She shoots 19 from 22 last week. Yeah. All of a sudden, somebody's not necessarily going to give her the easy shot to double team on McCauley because if she's shooting at 95% or something like that, then all they're doing is giving up goals by doing that. Exactly. At the other end of the court, Sophie Gunn, Jacqueline Verbeek, probably, again, there's going to be a height mismatch there. But again, they've got Brooke, if Brooke Thompson comes back in, then they've got, obviously, her patrolling the defence as well to help out, to give a chop out. Ruth Smith, a very, very dangerous goaler, but they could nearly swap it up almost. It's dangerous doing that because then you lose Brooks' drive out of GD if she does play, but yeah. it mightn't be a bad way just to try and combat Sophie's effectiveness. Brooke Thompson plays. I think Melton win. If, she, if they don't, then I can't see them defensively matching Sunbury. So all about Brooke if she comes back into the side, I believe, in this one. Then on Sunday, the first semi final, Redan taking on East Point, the white hot East point taking on a Redan side that probably haven't lost a lot from last week you wouldn't think they would have been pretty happy with the end result but obviously there's always a danger going into a first semi-final you yeah, know exactly it's going to be a very good game um East Point uh, really coming to form this second half of the season where and uh, Redan pretty much being formed for the whole whole of the season so it's going to be a very close one but I think that Redan and um, Sunbury are just that little bit above 
the rest of the sort of solos, not not taking any credit away from me, so they played a fantastic game on the weekend from what I saw. But I think that for Dan, the, just the structures and the, the way they move the ball will be too good for East on, on Saturday. It'll be interesting to see, and I'm really looking forward to watching this game on Sunday as well, because East Point have been red hot. There's absolutely no doubt about that. The one thing that they have done against, and I saw it against the Lakers a couple of weeks ago, they really strangled the life out of out of Lake Wendere and forced them into a low shooting percentage. If Redan have an Achilles heel, it is their shooting percentage. They yep. have been known at times to really stink it up a little bit and shoot around the 55-60%. If they can get goals in early, they'll be okay. A little bit different ring, uh, rings, as we know, at the Eastern Oval. They take a bit of getting used to, which I suppose is the advantage of having played there as well last week. Yep. Now Emma Henry and Ruby Parry will be used to it. They'll know what they need to do and just put that little bit of extra top, top spin on the ball. Because if, if you hit it too hard, it just goes over and clangs off the back of the ring because their ring is just that little bit above. It's a little bit elevated. You've got to be very careful with your shots. If they can do that, if East Point don't try and strangle them with that defensive press that they've got, and Redan can basically break it down, I think they'll be okay in this one. Yeah, that should be a very, very exciting game on both days. So, exciting weekend of netball. It is indeed. Very much looking forward to it. That is the Netball Show for another week. We thank Julia for helping us out and producing the Netball Show this week. And we give absolutely no thanks at all to the Flogs that stuck their head in with cap guns and opening doors and all sorts of pandemonium just trying to put us off our game. We're professionals, buddy. We're better than that. And I think it showed when you look back throughout the show this week. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you again next week on the BFNL Netball Show. Only two more to go.